today I'm going to do the reading diversity tag. If you don't know what that is, it's basically where I will visit six continents, except obviously the Antarctica, and t tell you all the books that I will recommend or want to read from each continent. The objective here is to encourage you to read books from various continents. So let's do this. The first one that we have here is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Neuvernegger. My copy is quite tattered because uh, it's been rained on, I have to tape it back together. It talks about a woman who is married to a time traveler, but he can't choose where, when, or how he will time travel. He can't bring anything, he can't bring anyone, so he would just go to a different time period naked, where he won't know where or when he is and it could happen at any time. This was turned into a film in 2008, but I think the film is more emotionally captivating. Second one is Dear Life by Alice Munro. This is not a novel, it's a compilation of short stories which captures that moment when your life is changed forever or about to change. And her writing is so good that I understand how she won the Nobel Prize. As for the TBR, we have The Killing Flower by W.K. Dwyer which talks about um, a guy or a kid who wants to stop the next 9-11 and talks about the YouTube generation and the, like, I suppose, cyber war or something like that. From the synopsis, that's what I get anyway. Then we have 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I know, it's a classic. And the story revolves around a family who lives in a small village in Colombia and how their lives kind of evolve throughout the generations. It kind of, it, I think it really does span through 100 years. After I read this, it feels like an era just ended and I was empty inside. I'm not sure if this would fall into the South American category, but as for the TBR, I would really love to read The Childhood of Jesus by J.M. Kudse or I think it's the childhood of Jesus because I hear that's how the Spanish have their name sometimes which talks about this family who was priced out of their homeland and moved to Novilla in Ecuador and that's where they found a missing boy and was hell-bent on finding his mother and I think maybe this boy is Jesus it's from James Could Say so I'm very excited to try one of his books I thought I would kick off the, the obvious out of the way right off the bat. It's Americana by Chimananda Mozi Adichie and talks about a Nigerian woman who had to move to the US if she wanted to um, continue her studies where she ended up staying there longer than she anticipated and discovering race and the difference between African and African-American people there, it resonates with the expat in me. And then we have I Do Not Come To You By Chance by Adobe Tricia Nobani, which talks about the behind the scenes of um, those email con artists, which you must also have in your inbox or in your junk mail. Um, and it kind of makes me realize, oh, these people are real. I don't think it's meant to be taken seriously because it's kind of a humor kind of book but also very insightful. And for Africa, I'd love to read The Memory of Love by Aminata Forna um, which talks about love in the wake of the civil war that happened in Sierra Leone. It's one of those stories which kind of connects the stories of strangers together and I'm really looking forward to finding out what it's like. And also, Ghana Must Go by Taya Selassie, which is a story about a successful surgeon but failed husband and father, who after his death, his children come together and probably kind of discuss his funeral and things like that. So intrigued to try. Europe is actually the number one most read continent for me. I usually read UK or Irish books. But I'm not going to spam you this time. I'm just going to give three recommendations and one TBR. So the first one is When God Was a Rabbit by Sarah Winman. I'm sure you're 
bored of me talking about this book over and over again so I'm just going to leave a link down below from the blog post and or video that I already made of this book second of all is a German book which is Rotkäppchen muss weinen or in English means The Little Red Riding Hood Must Cry by Beata Teresa Hanika which talks about a girl, a 12 year old going on 13 year old girl who struggles in telling the adults in her life of the occurring traumatic experience that she's currently going through. And I think it really portrays the feeling of people who have been raped or molested as a child. I don't actually have the hard copy of the third one because I borrowed it from the town library a while back but it's called Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Foer. The story is about the author's experience when he went to Ukraine to find the woman who helped his family escape to the US but he ended up finding out more than he was prepared for. This book for me really reveals why the Nazi movement was so successful in, the, in Europe in the 1940s. As for the TBR, I would love to read a German book, Erich Swiderda by Timur Verde. It's wildly popular. Uh, I've seen many bloggers and booktubers read the English version, but I really love to read the original version. It's an imaginative humor book about if Adolf Hitler woke up in the modern world and discovered all these technologies and suddenly became a TV sensation. I'm really looking forward to the film I heard is coming out. I don't have the hard copy yet, obviously, but I'm waiting for my boyfriend to give me his. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Asia is obviously also one of the most read continents ever for me. Because I live in Asia and there's like so many countries in, in this continent. But again, three recommendations and two TBRs. The first one is my absolute favorite of recent time, which is The Lowland by Jupa Lahiri. It talks about two brothers, two very different brothers, who are gonna drift apart because they have very different lives and then their lives connect back together through unusual means and the story goes from there. And this is one of those books that keep you surprised every step of the way and you and just hands you the unexpected all the time. I couldn't put this book down. Second book is Please Look After Mom by Kyung Suk Shin. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say her name. I'm sorry. Please correct me if you know how. Uh, in this book, a family panics when the mother of the family kind of disappeared at the age of 69 and the family came together to kind of remember exactly what happened to her last, what happened to her when they talked last to her and um, everyone reflects back to how they treated her and retrace their steps to know exactly what happened to her or where she might be. Obviously, we're not going to leave Asia without a recommendation of an Indonesian book, which is Sembilan Dari Nadira or Nadira. This book has been published with two titles, as I understand it. The book revolves around, obviously, Nadira, the main character, who kind of questions her life after the death of her mom, who killed herself, and after the failure of her marriage. I think it's really a captivating book, which expresses feminism without being in your face. For the TBR, there is In the Heart of Cairo by Mahi Wafsi. It talks about a woman who teaches in the American school in Cairo and she unravels the ugly truth behind the prestigious reputation of the school. I feel like it's going to be a bit dead poet society-ish. And an Indonesian book, obviously, which is Pasunjo by Oki Marasari, which explores the question of free will, like do we really have free will or is it just an illusion to make us feel like we have free will when we really don't. It's this explored through two uh, main characters um, and a fictional story which I imagine will be highly spiritual and very prosaic. 
Last but not least for the recommendation, we have People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. The story revolves around an old manuscript, a Bible-like or a scripture-like document that traveled the world throughout the ages, um, th through different periods of time, and was guarded by different people from different culture and different religious faith and different backgrounds. And it survived like hundreds of years of transportation. This book really brings out that possibility that people from different culture, different background, and different faiths can come together to protect one single objective. And it's really making me feel optimistic about the world. As for the TBR, we have Holier Than Thou by Laura Buzo which talks about Holly, a woman in her early 20s who seems to have it all in life but can't get the feeling out of her head that something is a little bit off and she can't forget, she can't seem to move on from her beloved father and the boy who could have been. And I think um, it's going to be a little bit about soul searching or something, something that all 20 year olds are struggling with. So. That's it for my Reading Diversely tag. I hope that you enjoyed that and that it will inspire you to read more books from different continents. If you have made this video, please leave the link down below or if you have any other recommendations, they're all welcome. Um, there will be a blog post about another reading challenge that I had throughout last year. It will be all about nonfiction, so if you're into that, please check it out down below. Um, leave a like if you do like this and you are free not to subscribe. I only make like one video a year anyway, so why you may waste your time with clicking on that stupid button. Um, and I guess I'll see you in the next video, whatever that is. Thanks for watching, I'll see you. Bye bye. On this day, April 24th, 2013,